Hello and thank you for joining us for this latest CATIA DASO Systems webinar with Car Design News. I'm Nick Holt, Associate Editor at Car Design News. As you know, this webinar is about ideation, 3D sketches, concept modeling of CATIA Bleu. And we'll deep dive into the creative process, the blurring of the frontier between 2D and 3D, mixing mood boards, hand sketches, 3D sketch and speed form models. Based on the 3D experience platform Bleu, was developed thanks to Dassault Systems' latest technology with only one goal, excellence of design through creativity, sophistication and innovation. Today, Xavier Maconian and Pierre Mahou from Katia DS will demonstrate how to bring your ideas into reality with Katia Creative Design, how to boost your design innovation and unbind your creativity. Together, Xavier and Pierre bring a wealth of experience in R&D, software development, conceptual design, class A and mechanical services modeling. Their knowledge of defining design solutions to address industrial design challenges has been gained from a broad-based background in both the industrial and car design environment. Now, before we start, I'd like to invite all of you attending this webinar to draw up some questions as you listen to this fascinating topic, which Xavier and Pierre will be pleased to answer in the Q&A session that will follow immediately after the presentation. You can ask these questions by typing them into the box at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. You can ask these questions by, if you experience any technical issues during the session, please type a message detailing the problem into the same box at the bottom of the screen, and our team will do their best to solve them. We hope you find this webinar stimulating and informative. And it's now time to hand over to Xavier so they can bring the, begin the presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Xavier. Thank you, Nick. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this uh, webinar. So, as you know, we did introduce uh, Blue on September, September 24th. Uh, with a previous webinar with Car Design News. And based on the, all the positive uh, feedbacks we got, uh, we have decided to do this uh, second webinar, going more deeper in the, um, in the solution, Katia Creative Design, doing some live demos about the creation and the genesis of uh, Blue, the Katia Design Show Car. So as you know, um, the Blue Car is, uh, is mainly a show car to illustrate the TASO system 3D experience platform and the Katia Creative Design and Katia ISM solutions. On the 3D Experience platform, what was really innovative with this project is the collaborative co-creation framework. Due to the 3D Experience platform, we were able to connect the different actors on the project to help them to stay connected and to co-create uh, this new car, this new show car. So today we will focus mainly on the creative design part. And maybe in, a, in another um, webinar, we will focus more on the surface refinement, class A, surface modeling and reverse engineering and visualization. But today, the main topic is really to deep dive into our creative design solution. And as you know, uh, our Katia Creative Design solution is really um, helping the creative designer on their complete creative workflow with a unified industrial design workflow solution. From early inspiration and ideation, concept modeling, to surface refinement and reverse engineering, and design validation with physical and virtual prototype. One major aspect of our solution is that we really want to uh, help creative designers to access to 3D creativity. And this is mainly what you will see today. A 3D accessibility with 3D uh, easy sketching tool, but also virtual clay modeling with subdivision surface modeling. Another aspect of the solution is really to help designers, creative designers and engineers to streamline their collaboration by working on the same platform. And then, thanks to the 3D Experience platform, on-premise but also on the cloud, to keep design network connected and to collaborate real-time on a single source of truth. So having said that, as I said, today we will focus mainly on the creative part, on the inspiration and ideation phase, and on the concept modeling phase. For that, I will give the end to Pierre Maheu, our creative designers in the Katia Design team, who will illustrate Katia Creative Design. Pierre? Thank you, Xavier. So, let's start with the, um, the beginning of the story. And usually it starts with a, with a design brief. So here, on the brief was pretty clear. Um, what we wanted to do is to uh, create a Katia show car that um, reveals uh, the capabilities of Katia Creative Design and Katia ISM, 
but also putting in the context of uh, the whole system company as a French company. So being in the heritage, in the history of uh, French GT car, but also in the DNA of the Dassault and Dassault system um, history. So being very connected to the um, aeronautic DNA. And then we had some inputs from the ergonomic package and also um, a very short timing to deliver it. So that was the start, the start of the story. And as a creative designer, what we do is, based on this brief, we start um, our creative process with inspiration. So first of all, we try to gather as much as possible information. So here we had the chance to experience the 3D dashboard that is aggregating a lot of information uh, depending on your search and what you're looking for. So here, for instance, we were able to gather some imaging coming from the internet about some old uh, GT cars, also having some other sketching websites um, to see what's going on at the moment, but also retrieve some aerospace images, some wind tunnel and stuff like that, and also our internal uh, sketches in the team. So with the 3D Expense platform, with Katia Creative Design, the first solution that you can really use in the creative process is dashboarding from, uh, from sneaking on the web. And the 3D Expense platform will automatically create for you some visual and uh, textual dashboards. Depending on any kind of keywords that you want to put, you can easily create your dashboards, your mood board, Sneaking from the web. So as Claudia said, based on those images, we start to create mood boards to identify some keywords and also key images to have a context. So about the heritage itself, performance, luxury, technology, and efficiency, but also some references coming from other industries, such as architecture or furniture design, about having structure being visible. Uh, showing the refi refinement and also the lightness by the shape itself. Because the whole point of doing so smooth board is to translate it into shape language. So based on those influence and also on some directly connected images to aerospace, we start to do very inspirational, uh, almost speed form, almost spaceship, uh, based on those influence trying to translate those influences into shape. So we did end sketches. Working on this project, we had a side college um, designer called Arthur Kuder as an intern in the team. So he did also the end uh, sketches. That was the starting point of the story. So we used all the traditional techniques based on uh, Pencil sketch, but also marker and stuff like that. And we complement it with our new tool, Katia Natural Sketch, to do 3D sketching. So here, it's really in parallel of the 2D sketching and all along the creative process, even at the very early step, the conceptual research, you can do both 2D sketch, but also 3D sketching. And here, for instance, Arthur, who are intern at, in our team, uh, didn't know 3D at all when he started. And he used, in less than a, a day to learn it, he was able to use it to experience his ID also in 3D by sketching. So the main goal of this tool is to express directly through 3D sketches and to communicate to creativity. On, in all the phases of the project, transforming the 2D ID you had on paper into a 3D reality with real measure, real 3D space. And last point was about exploring detailed design, adding details, and also communicate with 3D models. During the project, we had 
both creative designers working on 2D and 3D sketches, but also 3D modelers um, working all along. And these tools were able will as give them the capability to discuss directly on the 3D, using 3D as a language. So here is the result after a couple of minutes generating um, those lines into the 3D space. You can also add some humans. Um, you can also have some reference uh, in order to generate uh, your design. Here again, it's a, a very conceptual and it can be used even if, if you are inside Ketia, you can do uh, spacecraft and, and uh, exploration. Second point is how you go further and more in detail into this process. So here we have a short video presenting that. We make it a little bit smaller so that um, it's fluid for you. So here we start as you will do with pen and paper because inside Katia Natural Sketch we have two kinds of sketches. One that is pixel based, that is fully visual and you can do um, completely free form as you will do with pen and paper. So that's what we are doing here. On top of it of course you have some uh, additional tools to help you out to generate perfect circle ellipses or straight lines, but you are really free to, um, to do any kind of stroke. You can see also that of course we are using graphic tablets in order to have the best experience as Katia Natural Sketch is able to, to work with any kind of graphic tablet. Here adding some details, of course you can change the color of the pen, the size of it, and the opacity. So we are very close to the, to the sketching, traditional sketching experience. The interesting point here is that you're in Katia. So even if you're doing a 2D uh, sketch of the side view, you work in a 3D environment. So at any time you can load the 3D model the 3D reference, even the engine or any kind of 3D engineering constraint referential coming from, um, from other organizations. In this example, we are uh, sketching around the 3D models, the human people as a reference, but also the, uh, the, the wheel position. Exactly. You can have any kind of inputs coming from engineering or for ergonomics. Um, Another interesting point is you are into the 3D space, so at some point, at any time, you can um, spin around and see the results. So here we are doing the side view. But we will go further afterwards. So we can use this sketch as a reference. We can, of course, duplicate um, part of the sketch to reuse it, so it's kind of an advanced sketch. On top of that, what we will do is to sketch inside the 3D space by sketching on, on several view, creating a full 3D curve. So here, for instance, on the side view, we are able to generate a line keep on sketching it, we will bend it into a full 3D line. So by sketching from different views, at the end you're finally creating a 3D sketch. The idea is to, uh, to transform your 2D ID into a 3D reality with a very uh, natural and intuitive way, just by keeping the, the sketching gesture from the side view, the top view, or from different view to finally end up to generate a 3D sketch. And here what we are managing is real 3D curve, meaning that those curves are full Katia curve that you, you will be able to use as reference but also as an input for the rest of your design. 
So even if it looks like a sketch, you still have the artistic effect of a, of a sketch or an esquisse, it remains a 3D curve. Here is another interesting input, is how you can use some images as an input and convert it into sketches. So here we are importing a PNG image and we will convert it into a 3D sketch. So here it's still an image. We use a specific function called image conversion. And now it's converted into a 3D sketch. We can extrude it and giving a depth effect to the rim. So based on any 2D sketch, you can convert it into a 3D sketch. So here adding some details, having the front and the back width. And here we are adding more details. For that, what I would propose is to do it live so that you can see it in here. So switching to the model. So you did recognize it. So here we are in here. What we did is based on the 3D sketch, we were able to generate this surface. Which, now, can be, which can be any kind of surface. It can be a nerve surface, a subdivision surface, or a, a parametric surface. So in this case, uh, Pierre, what did you generate here? I did uh, generate a subdivision surface. Okay. And now what I will do is going inside natural sketch. What I will do is based on this surface, I will select this very specific option that is called on support. This on support command allow me to sketch on any type of surface. It could be cloud of point, it could be CATIA surface, it could be an import coming from any other 3D software, and I can use it as an input for my sketch. So you can see that when I go close to the surface, you can see the pen being wrapped on the surface. And I can start to sketch on it. So the idea is that as you are in a 3D sketch environment, you can sketch on a plan. You can sketch on the screen in a freehand 3D environment. Or you can use any kind of surface, a nerve, a subdiv, a solid. Um, object as your 3D paper. And the idea is really to sketch on objects. For example, if you want to explore uh, to explore a detailed design on an existing object or new design alternative, you can just uh, sketch on an object. Or another idea is that uh, you have a physical prototype, you can scan it, import the scan and the mesh, and then you can sketch on it also. So for some processes where you do iteration between the physical and the virtual prototype, it can be also very interesting to uh, to iterate or to uh, explore some new design alternative by sketching on the on the point of cloud and the mesh. So here, for example, you are sketching on the subdiv just to uh, illustrate the um, a new design of the of the um, the front light. So I can change the size of it, changing the color, and and so in the end, what I can reach is the kind of sketches.
Okay. So here are the kind of results you can um, reach after a couple of uh, minutes sketching on the surface. Uh, you can see the level of detail you can reach. Adding some colors and adding some details by sketching on the surface. So going back to the presentation, here are other examples of sketches we made along the, um, the project because we work a lot on the front face expression of the car and so it was very interesting to be able to generate those alternatives in order to generate uh, several types of front face. Last point is how you can use so 3D sketch also to re-inject it into digital paintings. Because inside natural sketch you, you can generate any kind of point of view, but also you can manage the perspective. You are able to take any kind of snapshot of your 3D sketch and use it as a reference, as an input for uh, digital sketching. So what we do here is based on a capture of a natural sketch screenshot, we will do digital painting in order to generate a um, final rendering. So I have a video showing the process. Um, so we are starting in natural sketch, we are designing on a point of view. As soon as we have decided with the right view, the right perspective, we are reusing it um, in any kind of 2D digital sketching software and use it as a reference. So based on it, we'll start to iterate and layers by layers adding some uh, visual effects as you will do for any kind of um, digital sketch, as you will do based on a scan pen sketch and use it as reference for a digital sketch. Here we are using a 3D sketch as a reference to do some painting. So here you will see that after sketching the outlines of the car, having the global um, outlines of the car, I will go a little bit further. So you can see that uh, we reach a, a good level of detail. And here, each time, you can switch back and forth between the, this new 2D sketch to the 3D sketch screenshot. So that is sure that the perspective is all right and it's very close to the, to the proportion, the size of the final car is working on. So going a little bit deeper, we will start to add some colors. A base color first to create some mask and start to add details. So we we can see in close up what's going on. Changing his brush, you can add uh, painting details, painting shadows, reflections, in order to reach higher level of details for the final digital sketch. So going further, you can see that it did finish the outlines, finish the wheels, creating the same mirror, still based on the, on the 3D sketch underneath. So we are pretty close to the end. You can see that we have a pretty decent a uh, digital sketch that has been based on the 3D sketch. So again here, and you've seen it in the demonstration also, is 3D sketching is really a companion to 2D sketching. We, it's not opposed, it's just going together. And they can be used back and forth in between because what we are looking for is to mix and blur the frontier between the 2D hand sketch, the digital sketch, and the 3D sketching. And each time what is in common 
is the behavior. It's really a natural way, a natural way to capture the gesture and the way the designer is interacting with his sketch. It can be 2D, it can be 3D, and it's the same way for both. So that was um, a quick view of how you can iterate and even re-inject the 3D sketch in order to have input for the 2D sketching. So now we are in a more advanced state and what we want is to go further inside the concept and to give a better idea of the proportion, the volumes and the surface of our design. So to do so, what we will be using is using another capability of Ketia Creative Design that is called Ketia Imagine and Shape and allows you to use subdivision surfaces to create concept design, concept surfaces at the beginning of your design. So the three big value of it is, first of all, it's easy to use and easy to learn. You can quickly generate surfaces and play with them with a lot of flexibility. The second point is having these subdivision surfaces, you are very close to a push-pull interaction that makes you feel close to a virtual clay. And last point is, as it's very easy to use, you can generate several design alternatives based on the first alternative. So based on one concept design, you can generate several concept designs and compare them, of course. So what I propose is to um, have a short introduction of Imagine and Shape. Going back to Katia, what we will do is to base ourselves on the 3D sketch and start to do um, imagine and shape surfaces. So it's very easy to switch from natural sketch to imagine and shape subdivision surfaces. You are still in the same software. You just are uh, changing from one part of the software to another. So here you have the 3D sketch still with the images and you will start to generate the surfaces. So we have a command of creation that is called net surface that allows you to have as an input natural sketch curve. So here, for instance, I'm using two natural sketch curves coming from my first step. And it will automatically generate a first surface between those two. And this surface is a subdivision surface. I will give more details by giving more additional guidelines. And you can see that the surface is automatically generated with those inputs. Again, those curves are directly coming from natural sketch. So based on my natural sketch, uh, I am able to generate the surface. I can, of course, decide about the precision of the surface I'm generating. And the more precise I ask it to be, the closer to the line. I can just you to see. I can change the, the viewing so that you will see the subdivision being created. And here you can see that there is more subdivision if I change that. So closer to the line. So as soon as I did validate that, 
what I can do is if I go back to natural sketch and I decide to change a little bit my lines, here for instance the middle one, you can see that the surface will be updated because by changing the curve I'm changing the surface. So I can start from a very flat surface and switch it to a very convex one just by changing the input. And it's still connected. At any time I can decide that it has not to be connected anymore, can convert it into subdivision, and I can start to play as I will do with um, with virtual thing. So I can start to select some points and start to move around. So it's very close to um, to any kind of um, subdivision modeling software. So that was the first way to do it. We have another way to do it is to directly use the sketch capabilities inside um, Imagine and Shape. So inside Imagine and Shape, you have the capability to sketch directly surfaces. So it's called Mesh Drawing. You are deciding where you want to draw. Here, for instance, on a top view. The interesting point is on top of sketching, what you do is to generate a surface. So I sketch two curves and then I'm connecting the two with intermediate curve and it will automatically generate a surface out of those several curves. So if I validate, I do access to a surface like I can keep on changing. So of course I can add more subdivision and I can keep on modelizing. So that's what I did for those subdivisions. And what is interesting afterwards is you keep the flexibility of the subdivision to connect those two. So at any time, you can merge two subdivisions together. And you can add more and more. So here by selecting the limits of my subdivision, I'm connecting both top and side lines. I can ask to be very sharp or very smooth depending on what I want to generate at the end. And if I do validate, I have now one merge subdivision. And so what you are doing is to do this kind of of interaction between, for instance, the front and the back wheels. You can join them as I just did before. And then merge this top surface with the bottom surface in order to achieve those kind of final surface. So here you can see that we have a closed final surface. Of course, you can generate the symmetry using the symmetry command, selecting a plan. And what is interesting is that all the surfaces are G2 connected. So that's the kind of thing you reach 
And if you want to add even more detail, for instance, here I have a sharp edge. What I would like is to smooth it. What I can use is what we call the bevel command. So here's the command. You can declare any sharp edge. as an input to this command and decide how smooth you want it to be. So here I'm switching between sharp and smooth and you can see that automatically it does generate the smooth shape. I will add the 3D sketch to have a better view of it. And I will add some beavers also here, for instance. So you will see better the impact of it. So now I will validate. I don't have sharp edge anymore. I have smooth edges. So I think now we are at the right level of detail. So you've seen how quickly and also using natural sketch as input you can generate surfaces. Now we will take the exercise of generating one of the details that is a side mirror. So let's go to, to the side mirror. So going to perspective view, going back to image and shape, and here. So here you can see that I have the context of uh, the mirror itself and also a line that I did uh, draw using natural sketch. So this line can be an input for doing what we call a sweep, but still using subdivision surfaces. So I will use the extrude command. I will start to design the, the profile of it. Can change the size. And as soon as I start to switch to the 3D world, I can see the sweep automatically generated based on the line and the profile I get. It will automatically generate a subdivision. In order to follow better, I can ask to have more subdivision. The more subdivision I have, the closest to the result I am. And I can validate, and it's automatically generating the surface. Of course, now I can keep on modifying it. And if I want to close the surface, I can just as to close that and to fill it. And it's closing it. I can close my subdivision. So now I have a closed surface. What I will do, I will change it a little bit. So I can display the mesh or not. So I can hide it along my moves and I can adapt my design. Here I will start another way, a more clay approach. So here I will start from a sphere, but I will start 
to modify and to shape all along. So here, for instance, I will modify it. I will give more hard edges. I will add some intermediate lines. You can see that it's very close to um, clay as it's very flexible to, to move. I can select only one side, start to translate it to adapt to my design. And as it's completely connected, what is interesting to notice is that on the other side, uh, completely closed, surface right now, and I can open it just by erasing this face and this face, and now I have an open surface. So you can really switch between a closed volume to an open one very easily. So very quickly I was able to generate this kind of shape. Maybe I want to bump it a little bit more here. I just select this point and you will see the shape being changed. I will also add some outlines here. I can even make it completely hard or smooth it. You can see the difference here. So it's closer to the shape um, I had in mind. And the interesting point here is, I just want to change that, is your inside kit here. So here I have um, just the surface. Now I want to do a volume. I just go to Generative shape design, for instance, and I have to transform this surface into a volume. So it will automatically generate a volume out of it. So now you can see that there is a surface I just created that was the input for having now a real solid ready for milling or ready for 3D print, for instance. I need fillet. I just refine it and ask for fillet. So here it's not zero, but zero dot two, for instance, and it will automatically do the fillet. So in very few minutes, I am able to generate that. More than that, what I would like to see is to see the reflections. I can just switch to um, the integrated ray tracing. I can just use this material in order to apply it here. I can switch the material into a, I would say, dark or blue. And I can start to retrace. So here I did not convert the data or switch to another uh, software. I just um, go into KTL Live Rendering that does integrate iRay Engine and switch on the rendering. And it will be automatic computing, creating the images based on the CPU and GPU calculation. And if I want to put it into a context, um, for instance, a more realistic context, I can change the HDR in order to um, manage the context and the environment that I have around, changing the reflections on my car paint here, for instance.
So here, for instance, I will go back to the real-time visualization. Ask to select a HDR map. It could be any kind of map, as you can see here. And by selecting it, I will see it the impact in my ray trace. And of course, as it is interactive, at any time I can change the point of view. You can see the reflections, but we also have the global illumination, so having the shadow being cast at the bottom of the car. And here I'm still on the concept design. It's still a subdivision of faces, and I can already reach this level of visualization because it's directly embedded inside the, the software. If I had a, an idea of even asking to have some um, emissive part of the material, for instance, having lighting here, I can even ask to have emissivity for this material that puts like an orange light. And I start the ray trace over. And you will see that it will start to emit light here based on this still very conceptual subdivision surface. So if you decide to do some light design, if you want to put it at the bottom or on the side and see what will be the impact, even if the car is not finished at all, you can still watch it on the conceptual surface. And you can, to propose this ID, just take a snapshot here and say that's the ID I had is having the lighting coming from here. So I think I presenting more of, oh, and of course, I can keep on changing some of the inputs. So here, for instance, if I start to change my subdivision that I use to generate my seed surface. Here, for instance, and I start to make it a little bit bigger, this way, it will automatically generate the, um, the thickness, it will reduce the fillet, and if I restart the rendering, we will see the impact, seeing the shadow, seeing the reflection, of the global illumination and ray trace here. So all along your modeling, you can check and see what's going on by doing some changes. OK, so I think we are a little bit late. So I try to go back quickly. So you've seen how you start from scratch. Now you have designed a first level of um, concept design, you can use it as an input for the rest. So first of all, what you can do is to use the sketch paradigm to generate other, for instance, roof lines. So here, for instance, by sketching, I am impacting the shape. I did have a small issue of calibration of the Cintiq, but I will try to do my best to show you the capability of, by changing one line that is influencing the rest of the design, we are able to um, iterate and to generate several alternatives and switch back and forth to check the impact of those kind of modifications. Just to show you some of the alternatives that we did create using subdivision uh, surfaces. Based on this very first model, we were able to change the font size, but also to do 
a kind of pickup uh, El Camino style coupe, or we just walk on the side lines in order to generate another kind of character line. So what we do is to generate very different from one to the other. You can see here the bell light is completely different. And we can compare those three alternatives really easily. The whole point here is that you have created the test your face and you can directly reuse it. For instance, you can do 3D printing with a 3D printer directly out of those surfaces. Here are the 3D prints of those three alternatives. And of course, you can do scale one review and compare it into an immersive room. So we are done with the beginning of the story from the 2D sketches and the import of the 2D sketches into the 3D world with the 3D sketching, refining it with concept design, and being ready to go further in surface refinement and detail modeling using KTI and technology. So as Xavier said, today it was focusing on ideation and concept. So the refinement is another step. But what you have to have in mind is we still are in the same environment. So you will be in the same context retrieving the same kind of inputs such as the subdivision surfaces concept design in order to go to the next step that is the class A surfaces. Same way for engineering and engineering collaboration. And final renderings and design experience. So here, directly outside, directly out of Kitia, you can generate those kind of renderings. So I think I have finished. Just quickly, all the thing you've seen was V6 R2014. And you can access to the subdivision surfaces technology already in V5. And in V6, you will add to it Katia Natural Sketch, meaning 3D sketching, and uh, Katia Live Rendering, meaning interactive ray tracing. To keep in touch, you can use the external for everybody design community of Katia where you will be able to find some work in progress on Katia Blur project, but also additional assets such as materials, HDRI environment, and also interviews of the people who did participate to the project. So as we are short in time, I will quickly finish. Here are some of the contacts if you want more information about the solution. And we will be able to uh, take uh, question and answers. Well, thanks to uh, Xavier and Pierre there. Great presentation and a great demonstration of the uh, design software. Um, the session, as Pierre mentioned now, is open to questions and answers. So, guys, uh, I'll hand over to you to uh, build the questions that have come in. Thank you. Okay, so um, we received some questions from the uh, GoToWebinar panel. Uh, we will try to answer to these questions. So the first one is, does Katia come with Katia V6 or a separate package? So Katia Design is a suite of uh, apps inside Katia V6 and Katia V5. So as uh, Pierre was mentioning, it's available in Katia. So depending on the apps, uh, Natural Sketch, Imagine and Shape, Live Rendering, uh, Katia SM are available in V6. And uh, Natural Sketch and Live Rendering are not available in V5. But all the others are available also in V5. So it's not a separate package. So if you already have Katia, you can also purchase these apps as add-on to your um, current Katia um, software, V5 or V6, depending on the apps that you want. Uh, So I'm checking the other questions. 
I saw that it's possible to split surfaces and modify the splitted one. But can we manage the connection between these new surfaces with the other surface edge by edge? Okay, let me restate this question. I saw that it's possible to split surface and modify the splitted one. But can we manage the connection between this new surface with the other surface edge by edge? So um, what is interesting, it's depending on which step you're talking about. But about subdivision surfaces, what is interesting is that when you are in the same subdivision, you can decide if you want G2 or G1 continuity, just switching between hard edge and smooth edge. And then you can combine two subdivisions with, for instance, a fillet. And when you decide of the fillet, you can decide which kind of fillet you want, if you want to have a G0, G1, or G2 fillet, even G3 if you are using KTI. Okay, thank you, Pierre. So other questions, how may I obtain a copy of a trial software? Uh, maybe the best thing is to contact the people that you have on the screen right now, depending on your country. And there are many ways that we can help you to uh, test, evaluate, or play with the software. So you have the email address of this uh, dedicated Katia Design Team Worldwide. We can help on that. Can we all get a DS calendar with this rendering? Did you talk about calendar? Yeah. No. But okay. So there is a book of this blue car uh, made in a way of a calendar. Um, again, contact these people on screen. They will be very pleased to give you the calendars. We have many calendars uh, on the blue car project with only Katia design rendering. So contact this guy by email. They will be pleased to help on that also. Other questions? Not a question. Very interesting. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you for that compliment. Other question. What tablet hardware was being demonstrated in the video? So for all these demonstrations, we used the Wacom Scientific Tablet, a 24 HD Touch. Uh, I don't think Pierre did show it, but uh, Katia Design uh, Solution, Katia Katia Design, is also supporting multi-touch device. So for example, you can use the digital pen to sketch with natural sketch. And if you want to rotate and navigate around your object, you can do it with multi-touch. So you can zoom, pan, rotate around your car and sketch with the digital paint of the Wacom tablet. Uh, I hope it does answer the question. Yes, uh, also sorry for the lagging on the screen. Um, this is mainly due to the uh, GoToWebinar uh, internet uh, speed. So it's lagging a little bit on the screen, I'm sorry for that. But if you want to have a live demo, uh, again, please contact the people on the on the slide on screen. And we also did experience some technical issue on our side because we did open five or six different Katia licensing in parallel. So uh, we had some small issues, but sorry for that. Uh, can we get a special edition as independent uh, companies? So you have to know that this solution is available uh, for professionals, but also for education. We have some special package for education. And we are preparing also on the cloud solution. So for people who want to, uh, to connect to the software uh, and use it on the cloud, we will come very quickly with an on the cloud solution. Is there any plan for uh, Imagine and Shape supporting G3 continuity? That's funny because I feel it's somebody from the system asking the question. So the magic and the beauty of this technology, the subdivision surfaces, is that it's purely G2 uh, continuity. So anytime when you manipulate your surfaces by manipulating the control points, the edges, or the faces, the mathematics always maintain a G2 continuity. So you have very smooth uh, highlights between all the patches. So it's very important for, uh, for styling intent to keep a nice highlight transition to keep this uh, G2 uh, continuity. That's the beauty of Imagine and Chip. Um, so, um, so yeah, we do G2, we don't do G3. And we don't have plans so far to do G3. We manage G3 with the ISM, uh, the Katia ISM technology, which is uh, 
doing G3 on, on uh, almost every feature. So if you want to add some styling complex surface with G3 continuity, on top of the subdivision surfaces, you can add a KTISM surfaces. Okay, last question, and we'll close on that one. Uh, it's about what is the price? So again, please contact the local people that you have on screen. It's a scalable solution with different price points and level. If you want to do just uh, concept modeling, or if you want to do advanced surfacing, rendering, or even KTIS and classic surfacing, we have different package with different prices. So please contact the local people you have on screen to have some pricing uh, information. Uh, and that's it for the equation. I think we'll close here. I uh, will give back the hand to, to Nick for uh, wrapping up and closing the session. Nick? Thank you, Xavier. And thank you, uh, Pierre. Great presentation today. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, please remember that this webinar will be uploaded into our archive and made available to anyone who wishes to view it. You can access this and all our previous webinars under the Process tab on the Car Design News homepage. Thanks again, and please don't forget to join us for our next Car Design News webinar. Thanks, and goodbye.